Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for the invitation. Uh, it's a beautiful setting, and I'm glad the weather is nicer today. But, uh, Nice to see you all here. So today I'm going to talk about uh, hair follicle stem cells and, and skin regeneration. Uh, this really is work that was started by uh, Mayumi Ito, who was my uh, postdoc a number of years ago. And uh, we were studying the role of the bulge cells in wound healing. And uh, during that time, we had a nice tool for tracking the fate of the bulge cells, uh, basically uh, turning on lax Z expression in the bulge, uh, and then making a wound, uh, in this case just a four millimeter punch, full thickness wound, and tracing the uh, fate of the, the progeny of the bulge cells. And so you can see that uh, within a few days, the bulge cells begin to uh, generate progeny and also migrate out of the follicle and they go right towards the center of the wound. Each one of these linear streaks emanates from a hair follicle. And so about 25 to 30 percent of the new cells in the epidermis actually arise from uh, hair follicle uh, bulge cells. And when this heals, actually the area is very small. It's a millimeter or two. And so uh, Mayumi was interested in studying the uh, scar that developed here. And so she started making larger and larger wounds uh, and eventually got to a one by one centimeter full thickness excision, uh, which healed uh, in an area about five by five millimeters. And following this, uh, she, she saw hair growing uh, in the middle of this wound. So she wondered uh, what, uh, what was happening here. And um, when she went back and looked at uh, serial time points, she saw structures that resembled uh, embryogenesis in the adult uh, mouse. And so these are embryonic uh, placode, germ, and peg stages. And then in the adult mouse, after wounding, we also saw similar uh, structures. And once the hair follicle uh, developed, it, it produced a hair, and it, it looked uh, relatively normal, except that it didn't have uh, pigmentation. Um, and so, like uh, any good scientist, we went back and read the old literature, and in fact, this phenomenon had been described in the 50s uh, by Charles Breedis, uh, who was at, actually at the University of Pennsylvania in the pathology department, and then Rupert Billingham uh, also described the same phenomenon. Uh, he was in Philadelphia at the Wistar Institute across from Penn. And ultimately, Albert Kligman, who uh, was a, a famous dermatologist at Penn that uh, developed Retin-A, retinoic acid for acne, he also had a paper in the 50s uh, where in humans he noticed that after dermabrasion, which is a procedure used for acne scarring, uh, he biopsied patients who have had that uh, and noticed there, was, there were new uh, vellus-type follicles that looked like they were coming off of the epidermis. So um, this phenomenon, although uh, studied in the 50s, was really forgotten uh, because of, probably because of this uh, review article that established a dogma that actually no new hair follicles form in an adult. Uh, but um, we were very uh, careful, and Miami developed this technique of, of separating the epidermis from the dermis uh, after wounding. And you can see the uh, K17 staining here. You can see all the follicles on the periphery, no follicles in the middle. But uh, a few days later, you begin to see these germs and, and pegs forming. Uh, these are coming out uh, towards you here. And then uh, each one of these has a corresponding uh, dermal papilla that's stained for alkaline phosphatase uh, in the, in the underlying dermis. And the follicles that form uh, have a stem cell population. They, have, they, make, uh, they express K15, uh, in this case K15 GFP mouse, uh, and they actually cycle uh, normally and produce uh, hairs normally. Um, now, one early question was where do these follicles come from? Are they from pre-existing uh, bulge stem cells? In the, and, uh, and the answer is actually no. Um, if you look at, if you follow those cells uh, that form those streaks, they, they are not the cells which form uh, the new hair follicles. So um, this tells us that uh, it's really a different stem cell population which is then 
uh, converted into a, uh, a hair follicle lineage. And uh, of course, over the last 10 to 20 years, uh, the developmental biologists have made uh, huge strides in understanding the factors that are important for the development of the hair follicle during embryogenesis. Uh, Wints, of course, are uh, very important for this process. And because the hair follicle neogenesis process resembled development, we reason that these pathways may be uh, utilized again uh, during wound healing and regeneration. And we were next door to uh, Sarah Miller, who is an expert in WINTS, and developed this mouse that overexpresses an inhibitor of the WINT pathway, uh, DKK1, driven by K14 promoter. You can see uh, that this mouse has a lot of <coughs> trouble developing uh, new hair follicles. So we asked the question, we wanted to ask the question whether uh, WINTS were important for this hair follicle neogenesis as well. So that mouse uh, is nice because you can turn DKK on and off with uh, doxycycline. And um, in fact, if you inhibit WINTS uh, with DKK uh, during wound healing, the, the wound heals normally. And again, this is a, a one by one centimeter full thickness excision that heals normally with uh, WINT being inhibited the entire time. If you keep inhibiting it uh, after reepithelialization, you completely block uh, new hair follicle formation. Uh, so WINT's very important for this neogenesis. Uh, and interestingly, in a mouse that overexpresses WINTS, a K14 WINT7A mouse, um, the number of hair follicles it forms is actually two to three-fold higher uh, than the control, indicating that if you uh, have increased WINT activity, you have more cells going down a hair follicle lineage and, and uh, new hair follicles forming. So uh, we became very intrigued uh, with this process of hair follicle neogenesis induced by wounding. And uh, Osang Kwan, who has given multiple talks here, uh, came to the lab and then uh, Denise Gay uh, came and, and they worked out uh, different pathways that are important for WIMP. And uh, one of the most fascinating ones is this fibroblast growth factor nine that came up on a microarray and basically uh, the level of FGF9 goes up uh, in the dermis uh, after wound healing 10, 12, and 14 days later, you can see the level of FGF9 going up uh, quite dramatically. And uh, so we knew that uh, FGF9 is important for mesenchymal epithelial interactions in the lung, and uh, the knockout mouse um, had lung, cardiac, and GI uh, or had lung defects and, and died at birth, um, uh, but the hair follicles appeared uh, grossly normal. And just to um, uh, go to the punchline here, it turns out that FGF20 is the FGF important during development, and FGF9 is, is important for this uh, regeneration process. 9 and 20 are in the same, very similar. <coughs> so, uh, what is the function of FGF9 during this hair follicle neogenesis process? If uh, we injected, Osang injected uh, anti-FGF9 antibodies into the wounds after reepithelialization, and this uh, dramatically decreased the number of hair follicles that formed. Um, we also overexpressed FGF9. Uh, these are mice that we got from David Ornitz at uh, Wash U, uh, who is an FGF expert, and uh, in this mouse, we're able to turn on FGF9 in the epidermis, again, using doxycycline-inducible uh, promoter. And um, you can see, similar to the WINT7A uh, mouse, that you get a marked increase in the number of hair follicles uh, when FGF9 is, is uh, overexpressed in the epidermis. <clears throat> so uh, to get into more, uh, a better understanding of, of uh, where FGF9 is, is produced, um, we did a lot of studies and finally uh, narrowed it down to uh, gamma delta T cells. And uh, not being an immunologist, uh, this was somewhat terrifying, but uh, uh, fortunately we were able to uh, work through this. And basically uh, what we showed is that uh, uh, 
gamma, these, this is a, a mouse that expresses GFP uh, in, in the gamma delta T cells, any, any uh, cell that has a delta receptor. Um, and you can see the nice uh, cluster of GFP positive cells here. And by in such a hybridization, uh, they are expressing FGF9. And this is about day 10 after wounding, after reepithelialization. Uh, early on, you, you see these little clusters of cells making FGF9. And uh, if you look at a mouse that is genetically depleted of gamma delta T cells, um, the number of follicles that form after wound healing is, is markedly uh, reduced. And if you delete FGF9 specifically in all T cells using an LCK pre uh, construct, the LCK promoters active in all T cells, crossed with a flox to FGF9 mouse, you also see a marked uh, diminution in the number of new hair follicles indicating uh, that this is an important uh, growth factor for hair follicle eugenesis. And uh, we then crossed the, the mouse that lacked the gamma delta T cells, the TCRD uh, double uh, homozygous mouse, with an axon lac Z mouse. And the axon is a reporter for Wnt, and so anywhere you see blue here indicates that the Wnt pathway is active. And so when we crossed it with the, uh, with a, the uh, mouse lacking the gamma delta T cells, um, and we injected adenovirus uh, expressing FGF9 into the wound, um, uh, we were able to rescue the uh, number of hair follicles partially uh, by introducing exogenous FGF9. And so our hypothesis uh, at this point was that the gamma delta T cells come into the dermis, uh, they secrete FGF9, uh, the, the uh, fibroblasts in the wound bed um, uh, are activated by the FGF9 to produce a Wnt, a Wnt2a, uh, and that's why you see the, that Wnt activity. Uh, once uh, Wnt is produced, uh, you then get uh, activation of the Wnt pathway, which includes axon. And again, um, this shows you that uh, in mice without gamma delta T cells, there's very little dermal Wnt activity uh, compared to the, the normal mouse that has uh, a lot of dermal Wnt activity. <coughs> and so, um, uh, here, here's a, a good uh, illustration of the fibroblasts within the, the wound bed. Um, you can see a lot of nuclear beta catenin, again, an indication of, of wind pathway activation as well as left one expression. And uh, remarkably, if you look at uh, expression of FGF9, remember the very first, one of the first slides I showed you was that it increases uh, with time. Initially, it's produced by the gamma deltas, but later on, a couple of days later, it begins to be produced by the fibroblasts of the dermis, and then you get a really widespread expression of FGF9 uh, in the fibroblasts. So um, then our model really uh, is that FGF9 produced by gamma deltas initially uh, activates fibroblasts to produce WINTS, WINT2A specifically, actually, and uh, this then causes the fibroblasts and sort of a feed-forward mechanism to express more FGF9. So this, this whole uh, feedback mechanism really amplifies the uh, signaling, uh, both FGF9 and WINTS. So this is all, of course, uh, in the mouse. Uh, what, what about the human? So humans have very few gamma delta T cells compared to the mouse. Uh, you can see here in uh, mice of all the uh, T cells, about 3% are gamma deltas, uh, and, and this is from, from skin, from the dermis, uh, whereas humans, a very, very small percentage of cells uh, that are, that are uh, gamma deltas. And uh, in addition, the distribution of these cells are quite different. In the mouse, the gamma delta T cells uh, shown in uh, green here are scattered throughout the dermis, where as in the human, the cells shown in red are actually more perivascular around the blood vessels. So they're markedly uh, lower in number and also uh, distributed quite differently. 
So um, we think that uh, this really nicely illustrates that the immune system is a key component of uh, regeneration in adults, and that uh, FGF9 uh, from the gamma deltas potentiates uh, the number of hair follicles it forms. Differences in the gamma delta T cells between the mouse and the human may explain why humans have a uh, decreased ability to regenerate hair follicles compared to mice. And um, it's important to note that uh, these developmental pathways are, are utilized again in the adult uh, and sort of uh, stimulated by, by wound healing. And so this uh, raises the possibility that uh, you can use this knowledge to develop a new approach towards uh, treating hair loss and uh, possibly even uh, cicatricial kinds of alopecia where the follicles are present. And you can imagine, uh, for example, uh, creating a wound perhaps uh, using a laser or a mechanical type of abrasion and then coming in later uh, with uh, factors that are, that are known to be important for follicle development. And so our hypothesis is that the wound creates an environment that makes the cells competent or susceptible to signals that are normally seen uh, uh, only during development. And this approach is, um, uh, is the idea behind a, a company called uh, Follica that uh, uh, I'm on the scientific advisory board for. So um, I've been very fortunate to have uh, really excellent uh, trainees in the lab. And uh, as I said, uh, this work was really initiated by uh, Miyumi Ito uh, and then uh, taken up by uh, Osang, uh, Kwan, and uh, Denise Gay. So I just want to thank everybody and the uh, funding source as well. And I'll take any questions. Thanks. Thank you for your presentation, Professor Lee. Yes, so this presentation is now open for discussion. No questions. Any question? Any comment? Um, let me ask one question this time. Um, have you investigated other signaling pathways such as GMP? So, um, so there are there. Uh, the reason we followed FGF was because it was actually one of the most, the highest differentially expressed uh, genes. Some of the other pathways are also differentially expressed. We haven't looked specifically at BMPs or SMAD, um, but you would predict that they'd be involved as well. Thank you very much. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you said the FGF9 is really important during the wound healing hair follicle neogenesis. And how about the, the role of FGF9 in embryogenic period hair follicle? So uh, FGF9 is, does not appear to be important during development, but um, FGF20 is uh, similar to FGF9 in that if that knockout mouse has a uh, hair phenotype during development. <coughs> so. Thanks. Um, thank you very much.